Why is it? What? Why is it overscanned? Will you please? Oh my god! Worst console of all time. Alright, that's gonna have to be good enough. Uh, chat, I think we need to make smaller. MuxyBot wouldn't post anything because I didn't, like, kill the stream or anything. We're still streaming. Yeah, it should be- it's fine. Why is it not- why is it overscanned? Does the Wii always overscan like that? I, I wish o Overscan should not even be a thing. Okay, these mini games, by the way, those are really fun. Yes, I know. Um, those, these are really fun with friends, especially Scope Shot. But that requires pointing at the screen, and we're not going to do that. I think we were on Waffle Wafers, right? Yeah, the vase on the table being knocked over, I thought it was always... A baby standing on a couch or something? <laughs> yes, don't knock the babies off the couch. Angry Dog. What a good name. Alright, Waffle Wafers. Alright. The game has started. Why is it overscanned? I don't... Does any... Is it normal for the Wii mode in, on a Wii U to be overscanned? Like when there's extra black bars on the edges? I didn't think it did that. I guess maybe it's just been a while and it always did that. But whatever. Oh, I'm so ready for clean to be an ability again. If you didn't know, in the, in the Switch Kirby game, clean is a power again. Why did everything just unlock? Uh, it's just because I haven't been to that menu since I uh, unlocked it. Because I played the game in pretty much a single session up to this point. Yeah, if you missed the uh, earlier Kirby Facts stream, which is like five months ago. Oh, I love the erupting, the frozen erupting volcanoes. There's so much good background art in Kirby games. It's like. With Kirby and uh, Mario, I almost think you can make a game where you're just playing in the background elements from prior games. Because there's some really cool stuff going on though. In there. We gotta, there. Yeah, Clean is making its magnanimous return in the new Kirby game. Oh. I probably need cold, don't I? That's usually an indicator. Excuse me. You need to adjust your TV settings and HDMI where it's just... I did do that though, my my Wii U. Now I need fire. Um My Wii U is not overscanning, but just the Wii mode is. So I don't know if that's something I need to set up or what. What is clean? It's an ability. Um, it was an ability in Kirby's Dream Land 3. Oh, yeah, but yeah, the last time we streamed, we played the first half of this game or so. First, well, first two or three worlds at least. Maybe not quite half. But I'll probably play the DX mode, so if you missed that before. This is actually the second time I've streamed this game as like a full playthrough. I did it like 2013, I think? Or 2014, maybe? A long time ago. In fact, it was one of the f first streams, I think, that I actually properly archived on YouTube. Way back in, like, 2012 or 13, I didn't used to archive my streams. I just let them disappear into the ether. Which I sort of regret, but I don't think there were, like... I didn't entirely know what I was doing either, so... Oh, no! I don't get it. There we go. I forgot you needed that for that. Uh, Clean wasn't that useless. It was actually had some pretty good powers, I think. I believe the back outline is due to using HDMI cable for the Wii U. Oh, there's no way I'm gonna use normal. There's no way I'm using component. Oh, I actually really like. So notice the like caution signs at the bottom of the screen. That's how this game warns you of a death pit versus just a normal pit where you can just keep going down in. A lot of games could really benefit from having that. Looking at you, Donkey Kong Country 1. 
obvious secret. Is it even a secret if it's obvious? Black outline. Yeah, I. Whatever. It's not really a huge deal. Oops. Yeah, I don't think I had to deal with this last time, which is why I'm confused. mess with it later. It's probably... It looks fine on stream now. Alright, these are kind of like the droplet things from um, Kirby 64. I streamed 64, right? Yeah. I think I've streamed almost every Kirby game on my Wii U. Which is probably... I can probably retire my Wii U once I've streamed all of the last of the, uh, the Kirby games on it. Oh yeah, I'm getting my Switch uh, tomorrow. I probably won't stream it because I probably won't have too many games. I think Kamino is going to be my first game. Or Kamiko or whatever that game's called. It's like a little RPG that's like speedrun focused. It seems really cool. I think Inside System, or no, uh, Circle Entertainment, I think, publishes that. Inside System is who does the Dark Witch games. Both of which are good uh, eShop publishers to uh, check out for them. The Dark Witch games in particular are really good. This is normal for Wii mode? Oh, alright then, I guess. Take this. It's a shame I can't really stream uh, 3DS Kirby games. I never got a capture card, so... Well, I never got a 3DS capture card. I never really wanted to buy a single device capture card. Especially not for like, they're like 300 bucks. Nah, I'm not gonna get Splatoon 2. I, uh, I don't really play too much competitive online stuff. Zelda and Cave Story Plus are the first physical games I ordered. I'm gonna get Mario Odyssey 2 and uh, Camino Graceful Explosion Machine, maybe the new Blaster Master, and probably that Gunvolt game. Gunvolt, the. Uh, what is it? The NES styled one. I forget what they called it. The one that has the uh, Gal Gun character in it. I just think it's supposed to be good. Does anybody who did not like the original Blaster Master like the new Blaster Master? Because I I found it very unfair, the original NES one, which is generally a, Oh. Oh no, I wanted that. Um, that's just kind of a complaint I have about lots of NES games. Aside from Kirby's Adventure and um, SMB3 and a few others, like... Well, the Mega Man games are hard, but I don't find them like, they control properly. I find a lot of stuff is annoying for the wrong reasons. Well, I mean, it's hard for the wrong reasons. I don't think there's a good reason to be annoying. I was not the biggest fan of blueberries. We used to grow... We had a bunch that would grow in our backyard when I was a kid. And it was fun to, like, pick them and grow them and stuff, because we had the... Uh, they completely covered this one fence, and it actually looked really cool. But uh, I was never a big fan of actually eating them. My parents would do all of the eating. Oh, ow. I didn't need it that much. Ow. Oh no, I didn't need it that much! Oh well. I already have 100% save file, so I don't really need to go for 100%. I don't think 100%'s like. Yeah, it doesn't really matter other than it unlocks stuff like the, the true arena and stuff. Which I already have. Oh, that thing has water! I thought that was just like a rando enemy. Uh oh. There we go. Mighty Gunvolt, yeah. But it's like Mighty Gunvolt EX or something. Because I already have the, the 3DS one. Oh, this boot. 
If you're playing this game in multiplayer, this boot is a complete nightmare. Because you'll stomp on your your friends, and your friends will like ruin your jumps. And I actually have a video of me and two other two friends. Um, oh fuck. Okay. Whatever. Completely failing to operate it, and it's pretty funny. Oh! Pfft. Didn't need that one anyway. Pfft. That's very generous of them. Oh. I see. Okay, I started to lose here early. Yeah. Pretty health, though. Alright, I got this. No! I don't got this! Last chance, no! Um, please respawn. Okay. Well, that's really easy. It's, it is kind of like Kurobo Shoe. It's so weird they left that localized as Kurobo Shoe. Actually, I'm not sure if it actually gets called explicitly anything in the NES version, but. Is it Kuribo, just Goomba? Thanks for the follow by the way. It's hard to follow chat. I need to zoom this up a bit. That's better. Okay, let's move this. I'm streaming from the couch today, and it's... There we go, there we go. It's much better. It's a different setup than usual, so I'm all bamboozled over here. Oh! Excuse me. I miss when Kirby used to, like, change color in uh, Superstar. So, oh hey, animal friends. Um, like, he'd turn brown when he got the uh, rock ability and red when he got the fire one. Like, to some extent, it was, you know, it was palette swapping because, you know, NES, SNES. There's only so much you can do visually, but uh, I thought it was really cool. Yes. Ow! Perhaps not my most graceful move. Kuribo is like chestnut person? I guess that's what a Goomba is. Oh. So I can share some irrelevant knowledge. Did you know that pineapples eat you back? They contain an enzyme that digests proteins and stuff. That's why if you've ever tried to eat a whole pineapple by yourself, your mouth was probably like bleeding or very sore or something. Um, it's just because they digest back. It's not dangerous to your stomach or anything. Um, your stomach acid breaks it down real quick. But um, if you eat a lot at once, you'll notice it. Uh, yeah, mega ability. Or super ability, whatever they're called. Yeah, that's why, um... Oh, right. That's why pineapple can be a bit painful. I forgot about all of the charging things up. It was a Wii game, so I honestly think... At least for some part of the Wii's lifespan, I think Nintendo developers were required to make a certain degree of use of the uh, Wiimote. Forget Kirby facts, be pineapple facts. I don't really know too many more pineapple facts. I just know that's why your mouth can get a little bleedy. Oh. Why is it like rainbow clown hair? You gotta get these lives. Kirby games are very hard, so you have to get lots of lives. I always find it kind of rude that Kirby games forget how many lives you have. Like, I get that it's a balancing thing. It's Kirby, so you don't really need them, but... It's like, you get so many lives, and then the game just forgets them. I think limes have that same enzyme. Quite a few things have that. 
obvious. If you eat a ton of limes or whatever, it's not like gonna hurt you or anything, but it can cause some gum bleeding. Oh, no. Excuse you. Kirby's the new Dark Souls. It's almost as hard as Crash Bandicoot. When uh, SGDQ, when Crash was on, I said, oh, there's a new Dark Souls speedrun up on SGDQ, and some people are like, what? But this is Crash. Because there was a review that, uh... They compared it to Dark Souls, Binding of Isaac, and, um... Uh, Super Meat Boy. All in, like, almost the same breath. It was like, really, dude? Like, calm down. I guess that's how you get clicks sometimes. Kirby is the super meat boy of Binding of Isaac. Oh, that also reminds me, someone once got really mad on YouTube because I, uh... uh they're like, I, I said... This was for the original Binding of Isaac demo, way back in, like, 2011 or whatever. And, uh, I said, oh, this is really Zelda-inspired, you know, it's got that Zelda, that, like, level design from Zelda 1. And like, this game has nothing to do with Zelda, you idiot, it's its own thing! It's like, wow. And the sad thing is, I bet there's probably people who really like Zelda, and, like, just have never played Zelda 1, that, like, have no idea that Binding of Isaac is Zelda-inspired. It's like, oh, Zelda's, like, awkward of time, right? And they were like upset. They were like, they were like genuinely mad that I had compared this game to Zelda. It's obviously Binding of Isaac, you know, nothing like Zelda. I mean, there's no, there's you can't even play an ocarina, so it's obviously nothing like. Um, this was actually a really poor choice for for this video. Oh wait, I think this guy has spark! Ow. If I could get spark from this guy, that would actually be much better. Yeah, I don't... It didn't seem like they were trying to do a jape either. Like, they, they seem genuinely upset. I, I, I just can't imagine. There we go. Plasma Style Spark is one of my favorite abilities, at least for dispatching bosses and the like. I'm so glad. I wonder if Kirby... <laughs> I wonder if Switch Kirby will have, like, Mirror and stuff. Mirror's one of my favorites. It was really great to see that back for uh, Robobot. I like the little frozen waterfalls here. Like I said, great background art, and sometimes you can- it's like, fairly obscured. So we follow Francisco? Why, right, back in my day, Sonny, we got three one-ups for that. And we didn't need a single one. <laughs> You don't need a certain amount of those gears to progress, do you? I think it just unlocks, like, the trials and stuff, right? So I've already beaten the game on another file, so I don't think it's a huge deal. I'll still try to get them. Because it's just fun, but, uh... Oh. Can't go around that. It's such a weird video gamey thing that there's, like, stuff that you can go up from, but not down through. And so, it's kind of interesting how games try to express that. Kirby almost always has some kind of platform like that. Soft platforms, I think they're called, or something like that. I've been thinking of making, like, a game design to play. I guess some people use, uh, TV tropes like that, but, like, it's not really game design focused. But, like, listing, like, you know, trying to name those little design patterns that most people wouldn't really think enough of to give a proper name, you know. Some examples of their use. 
you know, stuff like edge gravity, where like, you know, games try to make it so your character doesn't accidentally fall off ledges and things like that. You know, like maybe shit pieces. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think they just unlock, you know, stuff inside the star cutter. I guess we need to whip. I'm also not sure I'll do a true arena run. I'm not actually very good at true arena stuff. I beat the original one on um, Kirby Superstar Ultra, but I don't think I've beat a single one since that. They, they've gotten a lot harder, in my opinion. Maybe I was just more in practice, but I think Mark's Soul was a lot easier than uh, some of the other stuff they've come up with since. Especially the Robobot one, there's like so many really hard fights. Like even with Amiibo, I didn't, uh, I feel like I need that fire to stop here. I don't think it's really, wait, invisibility? I didn't see an invisibility thing. I didn't see an invisibility thing, oh whatever. The thing about tropes is that like everything is a trope. Like I don't think it's possible to truly make something completely beyond tropes, unless it's just like a complete surreal nonsense. And surreal nonsense is also a trope, so whatever. Fun multiplayer exploit, you can pretty much always just if you have a second player or even just a second controller, you can just spawn in like Meta Knight and he can do almost everything. Between Meta Knight and DDD you can pretty much always access those things. Don't eat me. Thank you. Nintendo really loves big creepy eels. bad or anything. Like, some people get confused and, like, I think having tropes is bad. It's like, relying on tropes is bad, but, like, basically anything you can do to tell a story is some degree of trope. And it's just because, like, you're a human and you learn from humans and just everything is a trope, basically. Certain tropes are usually bad. Like, the reason Damsel in Distress is bad is not because it's a trope, it's just really freaking boring and predictable, and it's so common, and it really doesn't deserve to be as common as it is. It's not like... Oh, I gotta... There we go. It's not really something that happens particularly often, it's just... What? Yeah, TV tropes, it's all... it's more about... You know, game design tropes, they're still tropes, but it's more about, you know, movie and stuff. Yeah, cliches are more bad than tropes. Like, I guess... I guess a cliche is kind of just a trope that's gotten old, or is too predictable. Like, tropes aren't necessarily predictable, either. Like, trope... The tropeness is determined after you understand everything about the situation, so, like... It doesn't inherently have anything to do with being predictable. I do think anime tends to be over tropey, like... It uses too many, well, shows often use too many tropes and stuff, and they go too far. Like, how the standard Sundera character acts is like... It's like the exact same in every single show, down to the exact set and structure. Like, that is not good. It's especially frustrating as, like, a shy person, and, like, all of the shy people in anime act absolutely nothing like how a real human being acts. It's... those areas as far as auto-scrollers go. 
those aren't too bad. So we auto scores. Like uh, until I played, I never really realized how many auto scrollers uh, Kirby Two has. It's kind of ridiculous. I think it might have more auto scrollers than like most other Kirby games have. Like, it feels like every second or third level has at least one auto scroll segment in it. Oops. No! I need tea. I'm British. There we go. But yeah, since. TV Tropes isn't really about- well, for one thing, it's TV, not Game Tropes. That's kind of why I'd like to do a wiki. Like, for a game design wiki. I was kind of surprised nothing like that already existed. Speaking of wiki, I would like to find some way to, like, make sort of wiki guides on my site. Like, oh, Golden Monkey time. I, I like people being able to contribute stuff to my game guides, but I also like having, like, that total control over them. Because, I mean, I write my guides, like, 99%, and I get some input. But I'd also like to allow a bit more user input on some. Sorry, monkey. I like how there's just a door with Scarfies, just to let you waste that key if you want to. Or, like, immediate tropes. Yeah, lots of things grow from what they're originally called. I, I gotta say, I feel really sorry for the super ability enemies. Other than super uh, bonkers. They hold super powers, but they are no stronger than any normal enemy. I'm just gonna immediately suck it up. Right, Snowball is particularly fun. Super ability. Oops. Most of the super abilities feel a little bit too autopilot, but Snowball is a bit more fun. See, it has the potential to mess up, whereas the other ones are pretty much just um, I gotta stop doing that. I'm talking about how it's not autopilot, and I'm messing it up as if it were autopilot. Really? Uh, let's do this next one, right? Just once you could use the thing against the Sweetness. There's that one where you get a trash of a bunch of mid bosses. But, uh, oh, oops. oh, has anybody played um, Kirby 3D? The 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 new 3DS Kirby thing. The one that's based off the 3D. Uh, last minigame. I haven't got that yet. I've been kind of trying to avoid using my Wii U and my, like, getting new games for the Wii U and 3DS since I'm getting my Switch, but I might get that. I wish they'd port some 3DS stuff to Switch, because I'd really rather... Any new 3DS game, I would really prefer just to be on Switch. The F2P. I don't think this one is F2P. The Kirby Team Battle Deluxe was F2P. Uh, that one's pretty much what you'd expect from a free-to-play. It's grindy, it's slow, it's... Yeah, I don't really like it very much. Honestly, the original game was more fun. The... Oh god. <laughs> Went a little bit too fast. Um, I think the original mini-game it's based off was more fun because it was a lot more balanced. I'm definitely gonna have a dry throat tomorrow. I've been streaming it too much today. I think just talking for a long time wouldn't be particularly strenuous, right? But you definitely need to practice your practice your well, whatever speaking and. Ow. 
I'm not sure how people stream for like eight hours plus and stuff. I guess it partially is just the skill and getting used to it. I'm not even sure if I'd say skill, but just like get your body physically used to that. Three hours is usually my limit, but I'm streaming a lot more today. How long have I been streaming? Uh, the Twitch dashboard stats are so crappy. It's over three hours, that's all I know. <clears throat> yeah, since I started streaming earlier, I was streaming some uh, Harvest Moon before. Oh! Let's not make the same mistake twice. I was streaming some Harvest Moon before this. And I kind of want to play even more Harvest Moon now. I want to check out... Uh, I never beat the PlayStation 1 with Harvest Moon. Just being able to spam lots of bombs feels really good. Kirby's Clash Deluxe is too much. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's basically what you'd expect out of F2P. It's slow, and it just wants you to pay to make it faster. And I did pay, um, I bought like a single, like $1 bundle of apples, and it doubles your passive apple rate. Oh, look at that Aurora in the background. A lovely background art. Pay attention, even if I don't, like, call it out. It looks like a Spyro level back there, actually. Which is a very good aesthetic to have. I really hope they make a new Spyro game. Cause like, did you know the Crash, um... The Crash remake was the best-selling, um, single console, uh, SKU of, like, the year or something? It even beat Horizon Zero Dawn, which is, like, huge AAA release and very successful. So, like, people like that kind of game. Just make them again. That's something that always frustrated me with the last generation of gaming. So many different genres and stuff. Devs just decided- or publishers, not devs. It's always the publishers. Uh, they just decided, no, this isn't profitable, so we're not gonna do it. And then you bring it back. And then people buy it because, oh, people did like that. You just didn't make it so they couldn't buy it, you know? Oh yeah, not the Spyro Skylander, or the Skylander Spyro. That's illegal. I want it to look exactly like that first four figures, Spyro. That that figure is perfect. It's just it looks just like the promo art for Spyro One. It's beautiful. It's a bit too expensive for me, but like they always are. Like, first four figures is like always just about twice as much as I'd be willing to pay maximum. Activision getting too much dollars for Skylanders. Are they though? I mean, I thought the Toys to Life market pretty much, you know, went the way of the, uh, the last plastic game craze, the, um, you know, the Guitar Hero craze. There's only so much plastic crap people are gonna buy. Especially when it only works in one game. Oh god, no. Oh. Rip. Um... But yeah, Disney Infinity is freaking cancelled. Um, Amiibo, I'm pretty sure, is only working because, you know, it's Nintendo. It's kind of... Nobody buys Amiibo for what it does in the game. At least I certainly don't. I don't even... Well, I don't even buy that many Amiibo. But everyone I know who collects Amiibo, like, they would buy it even if they did absolutely nothing in-game. And I, personally, I would prefer... Uh -oh. I would prefer if it did absolutely nothing in the games. Uh, I don't think it needs to do it to buy it. Is this guy sleep or a beam? Nice beam? What a weird new beam guy. Activision only cares about Call of Duty and Crash. But the thing is, they didn't care about Crash until, like, a year ago. And, like, I'm sure PlayStation, I'm sure Sony, like, basically paid for the development of that. So, like, they didn't care about Crash until it happened to do well. Well, they were getting lots of I mean, yeah, it used to do well. 
but they can't make they can't make a new Spyro game and have it be the Skyline of Spyro. That's not what people are wanting Spyro for. Oh. have too many amo am amiibo. I have the Kirby ones. Um, surprise, surprise. Um, I have Chibi Robo. I have a Yarn Yoshi. Oh, I... Same exact mistake. Uh, Yarn Yoshi. I have Chibi Robo. Uh, oh yeah, I have all the Animal Crossing ones. The Animal Crossing ones, um, they were pretty much all five bucks each, which... I would own a lot more Amiibo if they were five bucks each. I think they're just a little bit too expensive as they are. Like even ten bucks to me feels a bit much. But um Woo. But for like five or seven, I would say once they're half off, if it's something I kind of want, is usually when I'll buy. I was temp I was gonna get a Daisy Amiibo when I never did. That's not one of the rare ones, is it? Once Amiibo started being rare, which was immediately, is when I lost interest. Alright, the Mega Man Amiibo. I guess I should... Oh. I have other Mega Man figures, so I'm not really too jealous. Hello, Phantos. Genies. I don't think Activision can make another Skylanders. Wait, didn't they cancel Skylanders on the PC one? Or am I thinking of Disney Infinity? Wait, was Skylanders ever on PC? I think it, I think I am thinking of Disney Infinity. Which is definitely canceled. Excuse me. Disney canceled theirs. Was there a thir third one? Or is there just Skylander, Disney Infinity, and uh, Amiibo? They announced they're not making any Disney games ever. <laughs> oh yeah, they shut down their whole, like, the studio, didn't they? puzzle rooms in Kirby games. It's just enough to get your noggin going, and it's not like a super mega roadblock, and it's always optional-ish. Like, sometimes you need it to get, like, you know, you need to get all of the, uh, sun seeds or whatever they are, and triple deluxe to get the true end and so on. But, you know, the way Kirby, like, reviewers are always confused, and, like, they're like, oh, this is too easy. It's like, beating a Kirby game is always easy. Getting the true ending and beating everything, like beating the true arena, oh god. That's what's supposed to be hard. I don't know why more reviewers don't understand that, like... That's the way Kirby's been since... Since, uh... Basically Dreamland 2, second game in the series. Or is Adventure the second? But Adventure is kind of the same, it has its hard mode. Well, even the first one has a hard mode, though it's still... Very, very short. Lego Dimensions. Oh yeah, I was wanting to get- I wanted just the portal thing of Lego Dimensions. But the, like, starter kit for that was like a hundred dollars. Did that ever get cheap? I, I wanted to play the portal game, but I didn't want to pay a large amount of money for it. Because it was like a hundred bucks for the starter kit and then another thirty for the, the Lego thing, for the portal thing. I guess there was four Toys to Life things. Which is at least two too many. More like three too many. Which is funny because I didn't Lego, the Lego one came out last and I think it was kind of like after the whole craze. The 
I'm surprised the portal level pack didn't just ignore portal 2. Oh, did you play it? Was that good? Oh, let me double check my Twitter here. Maybe Oh my god, it's still seventy dollars. Yeah, I'm I'm good. I'm good. Can you even can you buy just the game pack and just play just portal? Like uh, that's all I really want is portal. The portal thing. Like th those should have been standalone. I mean they're thirty dollars. I, I I just I know people will buy hundreds of dollars worth of Lego every year. I mean. If you enjoy your Legos that much, more power to you, but... I, I just can't get into a series like that. It just... Just feels bad. Does he do the Super Saiyan thing? I think he only does Super Saiyan thing in the EX mode. Spoilers. He is an ape, though, so I guess it makes sense. He's not a golden ape, though. Oh, he doesn't wolf? Oh, yeah, he does. Alright, it's the, uh, the robot one is the one that's totally different. Ghostbusters. Yeah, I never heard too much about that game after its release. I don't think most people I know got it because, you know, $100 plus $30 expansion packs. Helping totally not our enemy. Friend person. Johnson. My favorite guy. Yeah, I'm not sure the Lego things were all that popular. It kind of, like I said, it kind of came after. Yes, the emblem, the most po important part of any ship. I mean, how can you fly without an emblem? It's like having a Honda without a hood ornament. That's how you know it's a Honda! And remember, only the, once the lore is up and running, I'll take you to visit my home! That sounds fun and safe! It's been worth it. Thank you yet again for all your help, and thanks for being such a cool dude. Well, I am a pretty cool dude. I'm sure this won't end poorly. Speaking of hood ornaments, the secret of hood ornaments is that companies know those get stolen all the time. They're actually extremely cheap to replace. So if you think you're doing somebody so much harm by like, you know, breaking their hood ornament or something, I'm sorry to tell you they cost like 15 bucks for like a Mercedes hood ornament. So don't bother. Never had to replace mine, but uh... Good to know they're so cheap. Ghostbusters, the video game so far, one of three good Ghostbusters games. I usually just avoid licensed anything. 
as a matter of course. It's only very rarely that I've had to break it. Though I love the perspective here too. As always, watch the background. Kinda reminds me of those planets from uh, Kirby 64. Also, you can see some major roots for how the uh, 3DS Kirby games oh, was supposed to get whip. You can see the roots for the 3DS uh, Kirby games in this pretty clearly. As much as I miss, like, the SNES Kirby games had a different aesthetic every time. As much as I miss that, um, I'm glad we've had Kirby games so quickly recently. After the whole GameCube era of, like, almost no new- Oh! Give. Uh, after the whole, uh, GameCube era- Well, I guess we had the, the DS ones. But I'm glad Kirby is back at a much more regular pace. Can you do the shuttle loop in there? Probably something above me. Oh, well. Bye, Naughty. What do you mean you don't know if they still work? Well, speaking of licensed games, another reason to not like licensing is uh, stuff like. One of the actually good licensed games. Oh wait, no, I want. Oh, he's a flan now. Um, one of the actually really good licensed games is Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and you can't buy it anymore. I think. Well, actually, maybe GameStop still has keys, but it's delisted on PlayStation Network. And uh, Brian O'Malley, he he's expressed interest in getting it like relicensed and like released on modern stuff, but uh, hasn't happened yet. You will know immediately when when it's back because I'll have a video mentioning it because it's a fantastic game. It's got some balance issues that every RPG like beat 'em up has, where it's a bit too slow if you don't upgrade at all, and it's a bit too easy if you upgrade too much. But uh, I've never understood why when you've got like an RPG-based brawler, I think there should always be a difficulty mode specifically designed to still be significantly challenging with absolutely every upgrade and just like don't even balance that mode for any other like just balance that mode specifically for people who have completely 100%ed everything else does um does dragon's crown have something like that i never got that far in dragon's crown it was a bit too slow for me honestly I really like the art and the, um, I mean, it's hard not to like the Vanillaware games art, right? Um, I liked what I played of it, but it was a bit too slow for me. Also, I played Scott Pilgrim with local multi, so it was easier to get going. I think you still have to unlock the online multi in uh, Dragon's Crown. I guess I never did like a port of that or anything for PS4. Most of the video games on 360. Oh, I see. I really like the movement of Wing. I think more games need stuff with like more like movement powers. Like combat stuff is fun, but I always have a special place in my heart for any like extra fun movement powers. I think that's probably part of why I like Metroidvania games so much, because they pay at least as much attention to movement, often more, than uh, to combat stuff. It's also something I really like about Bunny Let's Die. Oh, 
the company that developed the game shut down. Oh, that sucks. I, th I always thought it was kind of funny in a sad sort of way. When people are like, oh, lazy devs, lazy devs! It's like, nobody, and like, you know, greedy devs and stuff. It's like, game dev is such, like, an unstable thing. You don't really... There are very few people that would ever get into games that do not just truly love gaming and making games specifically. Because it's just... If you're just in... If you just want a quick buck and you have programming skills, you, you do not make games unless you just really, really, really want to make games. It's not a free ticket to anything. Which is a shame, but... We're going even higher up. Oh, you can do a shuttle loop in midair. Cool. I always loved the shuttle loop. As a kid, I always thought Wing was dumb, other than the shuttle loop. But it's actually really fun to do if you do it, if you use it well. Which obviously, as a kid, I was really the best at. Excuse me. I like the DDD theme remix a bit more, but uh, there's there's very rarely a bad track in a Kirby game. One of the most consistently excellent, uh, consistently excellent series in general, but the music in particular is usually extra consistently good. Like the closest thing to a bad Kirby game is arguably. Um, Kirby's Avalanche, and I mean, it's it's a, it's a perfectly okay Puyo Puyo game. It's just, you know, nothing particularly outstanding about it. Yeah, it's, it's more notable as a very strange case of localization than anything else. I think you're supposed to just... Oh, frick. Yeah, I was supposed to charge that throw. I always forget that games have charged up throws. Dan Aykroyd's official statement on Ghostbusters, the video games, this is the third movie. Usually actors are like only barely aware of the game, so that's interesting to know. for the game? Oh, that's really cool. I didn't know that. I'm so used to licensed game just being, you know, slapdash rando crap. They do have their place in the industry, though, because some really good companies like, um, Way forward and uh, Platinum Games kind of survive just by being, you know, you need a dev, we'll, we'll dev your dumb thing. And we'll make a surprisingly decent game, even no matter how dumb and low budget your game, your project is. The Way Forward license games are really never as good as their uh, normal stuff. Is there stone somewhere? Didn't have anything. Um, funny thing about um, Kirby's Avalanche, probably everybody already knows this, but um, it's actually the same game as uh, Robotnik's Mean Bee Machine. That's just the Sega port. Um, Robotnik's B Mean Bee Machine is just. I think it was the same exact Puyo game, but localized different, because 
obviously they couldn't have a Kirby game on Genesis. I don't know if, I guess Sega and Nintendo must have individually paid for those ports then. Porting and localizing back then was a real weird business. This one is at least sort of fun because you get to control the, uh, the ball thing. The Mega Sword and Mega Hammer are kinda a little bit boring. Happy face! I feel Hypernova did a bit better job of what the super abilities are kind of trying to be. They're trying to be like, oh, super mega power, but there's not really too much to them. The, the Hypernova kind of admits that, yeah, there's no challenge to this, so we're just going to make you do some puzzles and show you some basically cutscenes. Um, the Robobot thing is even better, because like, there's actual enemies like designed to fight with the robot, and on rare occasion you might actually take damage. And, uh, and, uh, in the robot form. There's actually a really cool level towards the end of Robobot where you go through, I think you go through it as normal Kirby, then you get the robot and you go all the way back. Either that or the opposite of that. But it's a pretty cool level. It's also a really long level. But it's a good showcase of uh, the robot's power without just being, you know, free win. Oh, I was supposed to grab the blocks, wasn't I? I was just trying to use the puff. That's what you're supposed to do. I wasn't even thinking about that. The oncoming wave of destruction is a lot less dangerous than it seems because it it speeds up if it's far away. It's kind of like rubber banding from like Mario Party or, or Mario Kart. It gets a lot slower once it's like imminently going to kill you. Yeah, it's one of the EX stages. The EX stages are really good in that game, by the way. They I like the re the um, tasteful reuse of music. I don't think they were new remixes, but um, still real good use of uh, music. Less good use of music is, um, so in Kirby Rainbow Curse, which is probably the next game I'm gonna stream for Kirby Facts, by the way, um, Kirby Rainbow Curse has a ton of really high quality remixes of a bunch of lesser used tracks like, uh, Factory Investigation from 64. Uh, really good remixes. They're not used in the game at all. You just unlock them to listen to in the sound test. It's like, it's neither a reward for doing well in the game, but for Pete's sake, use them in the game. It's such an odd decision. Like, the Factory Investigation Remix in particular is extremely good, but it's entirely possible to just completely forget they're in the game at all. I need to turn up my fan a little bit here. Is that or no? There you go. It sucks to not have my AC on for this long. Streaming is a little bit, well, recording in general is a little bit more awkward in summer. Very peaceful level now. Excuse me. Oh, there's something there. Just 
So has anybody here actually beaten the, the true arena and Robobot and Triple Deluxe? I actually have it myself. I guess with the amiibo I could probably push through, because I do have the Kirby amiibo. So I could probably force my way through the uh, the Robobot one. Though it seems like even with... it seems like it's so much longer and harder than the uh, Super... Uh, Superstar Ultra one, even with the amiibo. That's not necessarily going to be a free, free pass. I beat the Superstar Ultra one. I didn't use save states because I played on the real hardware, but uh, I feel like that was a lot easier. It was also the first case of there being a true arena, so it makes sense it could be a bit more easy. It was also it was a very short true arena. I think there was only ten fights. And they weren't necessarily hard, but most of them were not. Um, did you even fight it? Um, I think you did. Did you fight uh, the, the Galactonite in that or not? Oh no, give me the thing! I forgot you can't carry keys when you've eaten something for some reason. I think I did use Rock to kind of cheap him out, though. I only used rock for uh, marks though, because it was uh, very. It would have been very slow going otherwise. I love the creepy like mouth noises those guys make. Those things are like scary, like especially in uh, Dreamland Three. Like they just chew on you. Get to here. Yeah, that's what I thought. If you never played Superstar Ultra, by the way, it's a fantastic remake. Even if you played the original, I would highly recommend Superstar Ultra. I'm not sure how easy it is to get these days. I'm not sure if it's... Is it on Wii U Virtual Console? It's such a shame that I can never expect a good game to be on Wii U Virtual Console. And it's an even bigger shame that it's, there's not even a virtual console at all on uh, Switch yet. That's so stupid. Actually, is there one in Japan, or is that just Neo Geo games? I think the Neo Geo games are their own thing, not actually virtual console. Because they also port those to PS4 and stuff, so they're just x86 games. No, I guess Switch isn't even x86, so they're just you know, ports. Not that there's anything wrong with ports, necessarily. Oh, I remember this song. That's... Oh. Huh? Uh, can I go back? Uh, Ogg. Wait, can you jump? Oh yeah, you can jump down! I forgot about that. There we go. Uh, Mark Soul in particular, that was that was a really good and at the time extremely unexpected boss fight. That was really cool stuff. I like that Kirby never really lost that that creepiness. Um, not every game has it entirely, but uh, even as recently as Triple Deluxe, they've had. Um, I mean, Dark DDD and uh, Shadow Meta Knight actually have blood on there in some of their animations. So they never really shied away from the creepy stuff. I don't think they could get away with a zero to, or a zero uh, from Dreamland 3 situation anymore. But uh, they still have some good stuff. Also, I really love the stuff with uh, Susie and Haltman and... Uh... Oh, <laughs> Hidden in plain sight. Um... Just the writing in general for uh, Robobot was really good. That was a really good Kirby game to go out for uh, the 3DS. 
I mean, technically it's getting three more. With free. I guess they're not all free to play, but the other ones. Yeah, yeah, 60 spheres. Nutty noon. Oh, this is the level. This was the level I had so much fun with uh, trying to get through this with three people. I just... Uh, <laughs> Not that I'm much better at it with one person. But yeah, this is... Because you get in each other's way so easily. And you, you hit... You, uh, you can jump off of your friends and it will, like... It works just like an, any other jump, so you have to be ready for it. And you probably won't be. Oh, Why was I even still in the thing? Why is Kirby so damn precious? Because he's Kirby. Yeah, I like how it really sells the whole uh, climbing a huge tower thing with the uh, oh, background. And here I was making fun of me having like 4,000 lives. I'm gonna need them. All right, you don't even you don't even need this one to get the thing. Not that I actually really need the gears anymore. Anyway. So is he supposed to be like a fluffy ram and those are like the curly horns or what? That's what I see on his thing anyway. He was always just kind of a more abstract thing before this. So it's weird to see him with features. The funny thing is the harder part to keep the boot in. You can just drop the boot because you get another one. Something your teammates can occasionally harm them. Does it? I wasn't sure if they took damage, but they definitely can fall to their doom after being hit by you. Which was a much more common situation. I really like how this game does co-op, by the way. So Kirby Superstar, it had a problem where the co-op partner couldn't open doors and just generally wasn't considered a full player. And the levels were really short. So very often, uh, if you're like your player two is somebody who doesn't really know the game very well, they just be like caught behind and like confused and not doing, you know, not participating as much. But in this game, your partners have full, uh, like they can just be another Kirby. They can get full powers and everything. Um, they're pretty much independent. You don't, they're not, you know, dis destroyed at a whim. Um, and the levels are also much longer, or at least the rooms themselves. I would say the levels are pretty much the same length, but there's a lot less rooms. So there's a lot less of that initial confusion for a second player who's maybe not as used to Kirby. I really like Superstar and it's fun to play in co-op, but it's not... It's not really designed well for co-op. And playing with, uh, with the AI is even worse. The AI actually makes the game harder. Because I never knew this as a kid, but bosses have more health if you have a co-op partner. And the, the, the AI will like basically never deal enough damage to uh, offset that. I actually never played any of the new SMB games. Actually, I don't think I've ever played a Mario game with true co-op. Because like, um, there was never a real co-op in uh, like the early Mario games. It was just trade-off. I never actually played the new Super Mario Wii anyway. I only played SM new SMB1, which for the time was like neat and all. But um, now it's like, we've had how many of those? Calm down. Sorry, I just got a text here. I'm a naughty streamer. It's a little brother multiplayer. 
Yeah, it, it was like, it was nice in a way that your partner couldn't really negatively impact your game, but... Oh, I'm not fully in there. There we go. Yeah, new SMB, like, the very first one I still think would be okay, even if, well, it'd be downright good if it was the only one they did in that sort of series. It's like, the, for one thing, the, the art style never changed, and it was never a particularly good art style. Like, it was an art style that came about as a result of, like, them not really being able to do proper real 3D on the DS. I didn't know you could just bludgeon them repeatedly with a Wii kit. I'm really glad the new SMB series is dead, seemingly, and Mario Odyssey is a thing. I mean, 3D Land and World were good, too. Yeah, after new SMB 1, I just didn't bother. New SMB 2 is that bad, really? Like I said, I didn't play it. I guess it's, I guess it's kind of why I always like Kirby more than Mario. There's definitely not very good Mario games. Uh, there's not really too many that are like absolutely abhorrent. Um, well, you know, there's still a star, but uh, you know, Mario has some not great stuff, and it has lots of you know, rushed stuff. It has lots of we just need a Mario Party game. It doesn't have to be good. Just get a Mario Party out on this console kind of thing. Uh, Kirby never really had stuff like that. Kirby is just like, even the side stuff is really good, and I would recommend almost all of it. Um, heck, I mean, I think Canvas Curse is so good that I would consider it like almost a main Kirby game. If you're gonna play all of the main Kirby games, I would say also play uh, Canvas Curse. It's just that good, and it has a really good final boss too. It's probably one of my most played games on the DS, actually. I beat it with all four characters, or however many characters they were. I never did get all of the things, though. I didn't, um... One of the minigames was way too hard for me. I think it was the carts. I want to say it was like a cart minigame or something? I forget exactly what it was. That was bright. Um... Exactly what it was, but yeah, there was one of those games was too hard for me for the. I just couldn't get quite get the last medal. Is there even anything you get for having absolutely every medal? Ow! I had all of them but one. It's still a great game even if you can't 100% it though. Yeah, Kirby's just never gotten a, a total trash game. Never even I would say just an outright bad game. It just feels like Kirby just... I don't... I think Kirby is something that, like, they're, they're never going to allow to just go away entirely because it's just... I think it means a lot to a lot of the people working at Nintendo. But it's also not, like... It's not quite up there like Mario, where they feel the need. That they're like, okay, we have to get out a Kirby game. So it's never rushed. And so I think that's part of why it's just... They're always good because they're just always, I guess, passion projects instead of, you know... Gotta make a new Mario and Luigi. Gotta make a new, you know, sticker star. Gotta put a car in frickin' Mario Party, because everyone loves whatever the heck is going on there. Alright. You get Meta Knight at 25 levels. Oh, I got... Now you get... You get... Like, I got all of the characters, but there's... There's a few extra medals you can get for the minigames. 
I never got all those. Like, the worst ability. In fact, he gives a better ability, so I don't have to do it. I forgot he gets smart. It must suck to be a boss that, like, gives the best ability to defeat yourself. Like, that's just embarrassing. Dreamland music. It's embarrassing as Metal Man getting killed in one hit by his own weapon. Is he killed? Though I guess that would be less embarrassing because you have to at least defeat Metal Man first to get that. But like in a Kirby game, you can just immediately have the power like that. I would say this is a bit more embarrassing. Is he killed in one hit though? It's kind of ridiculous how overpowered that weapon is. Just, just the mere ability to shoot in eight directions and it uses so little ammo. <laughs> Makes it already really good, but it does a ridiculous amount of damage against certain people. He's killed in one hit. Wow. That was honestly something I never actually really liked that much about the Mega Man Classic games. I never liked the boss, the extreme boss order, where like certain bosses like completely useless if you use the right skill. I like how Mega Man Zero does it, and Mega Man ZX. They kind of have elemental weaknesses, and so it's a lot easier to tell what enemy's weakness is. Oh, it's good music time, if I recall correctly. I mean, it's always good music time in a Kirby game, but... You probably have a good idea of what to expect. I don't know. Yeah, I'll take this up for sure. Yes! No, you're in that Luffy pit? I hate that thing. That thing is infuriating. Because it's basically, even if you get to the end of that, if you're in there, even if you get to the final boss of that, it's basically pure luck whether you'll have like a proper build to do that boss. I got to that thing and I didn't do it.
down. Think about that. Oops. Missed the goal game. Oh well. 19 lives should be pretty good. I always forget whether game games have lives zero index. It doesn't really matter here in the game. Big boss time. Wait, is this the Phoenix Doomer thing? Wait, was it Butter Building that had the original mid boss tower? I kind of forget. Thundo Jewel. Oh, no boss. We just already beat the level. That's great, that's fine. Hooray! Suspicious here. <laughs> oh, Rainbow Re Resort. Yeah, I was just wondering if the big tall building was supposed to be. I guess it's still a reference to, uh. Alright, Grand Building. Ow. Butter Building. I can't imagine being a speedrunner and having to do this even faster and even more often than I do. Though I guess being a speedrunner in general is pain for the sort of reasons. Bunny Must Die is probably the only game I've ever speedrun of any sort. I guess. I guess we could probably do Dark. Uh, I've done Dark Witch pretty quickly fast. Ow, holy crap! That's that is rude. That was that was just rude. Did you, did you see my health? I was at full health until now. Oh. I forgot he did that. I mean he is a phoenix, but. Almost killed it. No, please. <laughs> that was that was rude. Come on, get him with the tuna. There's also a wooden sword, but it's not. It's the giant fish! I forget exactly what else. Please. Oh no! I'm on the tuna. <laughs> There's Galaxia. I think Galaxy is another pretty rare one. Now we get it. Yeah, Kirby's version of Omni Slash. That and the area where you get to beat up a bunch of uh, mid-bosses is one of my favorite uses of the super abilities. The sail is a very important part of the starship.
fact, none of the parts we actually get really seem like they would be remotely relevant to a starship, but whatever. Don't ask too many questions. Oh yeah, yeah, you did it, Kirby. Lore's back in business. The ores both winning the emblem and the mast. Yep, it's all here. The moment I've been waiting for, it's here. You're my hero. I guess we beat the game and everything's good now. My promise is a promise. I should... I I owe you a trip to my home, a trip to Halchondria. Halchondria exists in another dimension. It's super far away, but the lore can fly us there in the blink of an eye. Pack some snacks, Kirby. We're off to Halchondria. I'm good on snacks. Everything in the world is my snacks. DDD and Meta Knight and Kirby are just here. Look at his little robe. He's supposed to be intimidating, but he looks... Meta Knight looks adorable with his little cape all hung up. I'm surprised this game has real full screen mode. Am I misremembering, or was that pretty rare even on Wii games? Oh no, bad things happened. How unusual. It's glad. I know it's supposed to be him giving a peace sign, but it really looks like he has a bunny on the back of his DDD's shirt thing. I honestly barely remember the Wii, like, day to day. I remember it being a big pain in the butt, like it was at the very start of the stream. Quite a few games didn't just have full screen, just bars on the side of the screen. Yeah, that sounds about right. Gotta go fight Quad Dragon. Who looks like Spyro's cousin. He looks even more like Spyro's cousin in his alternate palette. Oh, we get to see a lot of unlock animations now. Hours. Looks more like Spyro than Skylander Spyro. Pretty much, yeah. Ah, here we go. I like when there's a little ability selection room in Kirby games. Oh, let's go Tornado. We rarely get that one. It's also an invincibility frame central. you have to say for yourself. Kirby, that dragon. His name is Landia. He's lived on this planet for ages, but it's always been fast asleep. Freaking lazy dragons, taking our jobs. Recently, though, it awoke and went on a rampage. Please, Kirby, you must defeat that crazy dragon. I know it lasts a lot of you, but this is it, I swear. Nothing bad could possibly happen by defeating that dragon, so. What a pretty planet he lives on, by the way. The band's just kind of practicing here. Eternal eruption in the background. <clears throat> this game also brings back the uh, level name spelling something out thing. So far we've got crown and then an E. Some good music in this area too. I like that moon in the background.
I also like the little mechanical flowers. It's so different that the Waddle Dees are different. Egg engine. Sounds like an endgame Sonic level. It does. Oh, I'm afraid it can go up. Sonic Mania come out? Is that August? I have the limited edition for that order. I'm not sure if I'll stream it, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. I can't believe that it took them this long to figure out what Sonic 4 really should have been, but uh, I'm glad they learned. It's not when you learn, it's, it's whether you learn. I have I've already ordered it, so I've been I've been avoiding the stuff. I don't like to like I haven't listened to the new track they released or anything like that. I know there's gonna be cutscenes, so that's cool. But uh, once I know I'm gonna enjoy a game, or at least like 99% sure, I just buy it and I don't like to. I just go on a bit of a media blackout or whatever. Oops. You have to hit the side of that to get into that thing. I also like the little gear faces they have. Tempted by Spark, but I'll keep this. Also, there's a certain something I really like about... It's hard to like express it in a term, but I kind of call it like difficulty as content instead of like a difficulty mode. Uh, it's something that Kirby does really well, and like uh, I say, N plus plus is a really great example of it. So in N plus plus, the main game is hard, but it's drastically harder if you try to get all the gold medals in every level, which is kind of like you know 100% a Kirby a Kirby game. So like the, he, trying to collect all of the gold, it's the same levels. But it makes everything so much harder without being like a separate mode. And I actually really like that, because it kind of... It just feels much more organic than just having, you know... Oh, you beat it on normal, so now you gotta go beat it on super hard on mode. But instead, just replay the levels, but, you know, there's... Just always that option to, uh... To get all of the things, I guess. And Kirby just kind of does that. It, it's less of a drastic in difficulty increase in Kirby compared to N++. Or at least it's less hard overall uh, in Kirby. N++, I guess the difficulty difference is not too dissimilar. Oh, Sonic Mania has a manual? That's cool. I like when games still do manuals. The Sonic Kagura games usually have really good manuals. I think they're... It's most of the Japanese versions that have... Like, they have little comics and everything in the manuals. It's really good. There's a lot of dumb whining about the Sonic Kagura games, but if you play them and you listen to the, uh, the producer of them, like, it's really clear it's a passion project and they really care about what they do. It's pretty cool. They don't have the biggest budget in the entire world. What a surprise. But uh, they love what they do and they do good stuff. So, hats off to them. These guys look like Robotnik enemies. Like, they look like egg bombs. I guess they're in egg engines, so... Makes sense. But... It's neat that you can control the fire thing, but these... The, the super fire things are still... Or whatever, whatever it's called. Mo monster flame. They're, they're basically autopilot.
like Waypoint had a really good interview. I mean, all of his interviews are really good. Uh, Kenichiro Taka is his uh, name, the producer. Or just follow him on Twitter. He has an English account. But it, it's really easy to tell that he's just really genuine about his games. Oh god. Um, that was dangerous. How dare you make me go left? Actually, it was I first went left in one of my very first games, so I wasn't like super weirded out by it. But uh, Yoshi's Island was the first game I had to go left. In. Which... Yoshi's Island and Donkey Kong Country were my first video games ever, which is hard to find a better set of games than that. To start off with, especially considering time. Donkey Kong Country 2 would have been a bit better, but it would have been less likely. But there's like, it's only in like one of the, it's fairly uncommon in Yoshi's Island, but uh, there's a level in just like the first or second area where you gotta go left. This game is Super Mario World. Yeah, I bet it is for a lot of people. Anybody who's SNES was their first console. I actually did not have Super Mario World uh, for my SNES. I got Yoshi's Island, and uh, I just borrowed it from a friend. I never really thought it was as good as Yoshi's Island, but I enjoyed it. There's always time to do stuff. Never feel like you're too old to do whatever. A lot of people make their first game at like 30, 40. Never feel like there's some arbitrary date or age by which you need to do crap. Since I went PS1 after NES, I didn't expect going left until later. I guess with PS1, directionality was less of a thing. Because, I mean, crash, you're just going wherever. I mean, the first crash level, I think you go down of all directions. <laughs> it's probably a stranger thing for a platformer that's... I mean, it's not like it's a 2D platformer. Well, sometimes it is. Oh, yeah, Spyro is one of my first PS1 games. Fantastic series. Oh, here we go. I wonder what I th would have thought of Donkey Kong 64 if I had played it after or before Spyro. That was the game that taught me that 3D is not always better. I love the Donkey Kong Country series. I played that. I, I never really forgave Rare for that. Really. Renting games is a thing. That was. I wonder if that's weird to people these, these days. I rented DKC before I got it. Before I got the real thing. And we would try to make sure that like we rented the same cart. I'm not sure how much money you would even save by renting. I'm not. You know, I was tiny bab at the time, and I had no concept of prices or money, so I never really knew what any of that cost or anything. I wonder how much better DKC DK64 would be if you simply just made everyone able to collect every collectible. Like, you'd probably still need abilities to reach a lot of them. 
and it would probably still, you know, there would still be skill and everything involved, but there would be so much less switching and just infuriating garbage. I wonder if there's a cheat code for that, actually. I doubt that many people are really screaming for a remade one, though. They could definitely use it, but... I don't really think it was that inherently, like... I don't think the underlying game was really so high quality. It really justifies. Well, I guess there's Gamefly and Redbox now. Probably be Game Shark is usually about like flipping flags that are already in the game. So if there's not already like some kind of developer mode. Just let me get the garbage. It's time for Pro Pat Kirby. with all of the single-use uh, mm -hmm. abilities we're dropping here. Mm -hmm. Oops. You were supposed to charge that, but I was about to fall into the thing. <clears throat> I guess a ROM hat could do it, true. forget how Scarfy looks in Superstar. He's like traumatizing. He's not particularly untraumatizing in later games, but he's like particularly grotesque, especially compared to the game itself and general graphics of the time. Over a hundred golden bands, too. Oh, banana. Like, 200 times. Also, isn't that one of the composers? Isn't that the composer who's actually the one recorded saying that? mistakes they made in Donkey Kong 1 was making the, the collectible, or like, getting, you know, 100% of the, like, optical stuff too weird. So it felt a lot better in DKC 2, and I thought 3 had a good balance. Although DKC 3 is really freaking hard. The, that final area... Some games I'm really surprised I ever even beat as a kid, because I was not particularly good at games. I'm sure I'd be a lot better if I got went back to a lot now. Yeah, I thought it was Greg Hercup who's going, oh, banana. That's probably like a voice filter on it, so obviously. But, uh, at least I thought it was the composer. generating the boss door or whatever. Oh yeah, I managed to get to my Charizard to level 100 in Pokemon Red. I, I just... I don't know. 
That was, though that was back when like getting a new game was like a once a month thing if I was lucky. So I guess it's not a huge surprise that if I really liked a game and it had a lot to do in it, or even just repetitive stuff, I would do it. Games that I wouldn't really even want to do that stuff in anymore. So. I'm sort of sad that I didn't play get more RPGs until the PS1 era. Because those would have been great. But I don't it's one of the things that like my parents, they don't know games. They wouldn't know like which games are, you know, high, you know, gameplay hours per dollar. They're, they're all just games to them. They're still all just games to them. My parents did find some really good games though. My dad bought me Medieval just because I think he just thought it looked cool. And like it was really good. And I never would have thought to buy that either. I think he just bought it because he thought it was like about medieval stuff. And he likes, you know. He likes uh, he buys lots of books on that and crap. So I'm very glad he bought that. It's like one of my favorite PS1 games actually. That and uh, Medieval 2 is really good too. Though it has some bull crap. He has one really bull crap level that I never beat without cheating as a kid. And it was because it's a stupid level. It's that thing where you have to get parts for your body to do that stupid fight. Like, Medieval 2 is still pretty good, but it has too much dumb mini game nonsense going on in it. Donkey Kong 64. Welcome to bonus stage! On who bought me Raymond just because my name is Raymond. Oh yeah, back on kids these days, they don't know. They don't understand. They don't know the pain of PlayStation One discs. I had my copy of um, Final Fantasy One Tactics, which I think I still have. Uh, it crashes. Oh no! It crashes if you uh, if you scroll too far down in the shop. So I never beat that game. I probably could have just brute forced it with lots of leveling and stuff, but I never did. Just blamed myself or God. Um, obviously, we're going to get a super ability here. Yeah, the PS1 discs scratch insanely easily. DVDs and particularly Blu-rays. What are you doing? Oh. Hello. Hey. Sorry. Unexpected visitor. Don't know why people don't, you know, let you know beforehand, but whatever. Uh, at least it's one of these stages. War of the Lions. Yeah, I heard people really like War of the Lions, but they wish it had the original uh, organization. Which is kind of funny, because it's actually like an inaccurate but extremely good in a weird way localization. Like, some of the lines are wrong, but they're wrong in a really cool way. Like, they have a really cool, flowery English to them. Which I hear War of the Lions doesn't have. I have War of the Lions. I think it was a PS Plus game. I got it. Um, I never got too far in it, though. Oh, Parker. Oh, the same thing happened to you for Final Fantasy. Aw, oh, that sucks. Oops. I know. Um, yeah, Final er, CDs scratch really bad, especially. I had a lot more trouble with um, 
PS1 CDs than anything else. But, uh... DVDs were better, and I think Blu-rays are, like, really hard to scratch. I've never had a Blu-ray scratch. Oh, bad. I, uh... In fact, I don't even think I ever had a PS2 game get bad, but I had- I even had like a disc repairing kit for a PS1. I think the only game I ever couldn't fix was, uh... I always love in Kirby games and stuff where there's just water in the air, it's just, you know, whatever. It has a really cool aesthetic to it. Especially in Superstar, when there's just like random stars in the water for no reason. Just, just because it looks cool. That's that's what your video game aesthetic should be. It looks cool, do it. Super realism. Everybody else already does super realism. You don't you're not gonna stand out that way. You gotta look good. Also, that water looks really gross, so I wouldn't actually want to swim in that water. But the fact that it's floating is cool. Let's see, I copy oops. Sorry, the glasses get messed up. Huh. I mean, I'm sure it's possible. I don't think DVDs are as scratch resistant as. I mean, I've seen some scratches on DVDs. I don't know why they turn water into poison in Robobot. It's not... It's, I don't even think it's as good as poison itself. I mean, it's just such a... It's a palette swap of such a recent ability. It's probably my least favorite Robobot ability. For the most part, Robobot is good stuff. But, uh, yeah. It also doesn't have all of water's abilities. Is it bad they keep hearing DVD is DVD? I guess they're not very different. There's a lot of words that are like that. You only really, like, phonetically they're almost identical, but you just hear it from context. You're still in the pit of 400 trials? Have you gotten, have you found the slime thing yet? Or, I found that very unpleasant. How's Twitch been in terms of latency and quality for everyone, by the way? I will admit, there have been less people watching on Twitch than they used to watch on YouTube. But uh, it's kind of a early in the uh, switch over. My DMs, the, the copyright abuse does seem to have gone away for now on YouTube. So... I guess I could go back by this point, but uh... Forty-eight out of one hundred. Use save states if you got them. I don't usually like to encourage save states. Well, depends on the game, but that's definitely a situation where save states are valid. See, Twitch has been all right. The quality's fine. The latency is pretty much the same as YouTube. I think the reason we had our latency before was I think that was mostly restream and the restream chat, because the restream chat added more lag than I realized. It adds like an extra 2-3 seconds. And since the latency itself was like 10 seconds, that's pretty significant. Extra. You can't really get, aside from streaming only to Mixer, you can't really get too much lower. If I streamed only to Mixer, I could get latency of like, I think it's sub-second. It's actually, it's, it, it is pretty impressive. But getting people to use Mixer is like hurting cats while pulling teeth. So... I mean, maybe it's less like that, but I, don't, I just didn't appreciate it. Also, like, Mixer stopped offering, um, like, they increased their partnership program requirements um, because of, you know, an expected influx of, you know, new users and crap. But I hadn't actually seen any more people use Mixer 
and that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And then Twitch affiliates exclusivity clause rubbed me the wrong way, so I went to, to just YouTube, which actually went pretty well. Like, I think most people would be like, oh no, don't just do YouTube, that's the worst, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, it actually had been, you know, working pretty well. But then YouTube took me off with the copyright stuff. Basically, everything is terrible. I... Uh, Twitch has gotten better. Twitch... It's really just the exclusivity clause that, that ruffles my britches. Um, most of... Oh, no. No, please. Yes. Alright. It's... Everything but that is pretty... Pretty... Much fixed. Like, we've got quality options. That was a big annoyance. Twitch affiliate lowers the bar a lot for being able to monetize. And one thing I never liked about how Twitch monetizes... So on YouTube, the requirements for monetization are pretty low. And if you don't monetize, unless you get content ID'd, there's no ads on your stuff, I don't believe. And you can just... More generally, there's an option to not have ads. On Twitch, you can't not have ads. I know people just use ad block, but... I like that option for that. I mean... I'm not sure Twitch necessarily has the capacity to do that. Because, I mean, YouTube... It's hard to beat YouTube in terms of infrastructure, right? So it's not necessarily a clean fight, but... Um, but still, it was nice that YouTube has that. And I just always thought it was kind of stupid that, you know, I can't not have ads, but I also can't benefit from ads on Twitch. Though YouTube does have the issue of, if you do get, like, I had sponsorships enabled, and nobody really bit, though I only had, like, two streams where I had sponsorships enabled before the whole shitface situation happened. I try not to swear too much for current streams and so on, but that particular person <sighs> aggravates me very much. Though fortunately that situation seems to have gone quiet, and I hope I never have to hear about it ever again in my whole life. I'm not sure I'll be that lucky, but excuse me, sir. Uh-oh. Don't need me. I've had a dollar for every time I've seen that Xfinity ad. That's the other thing that you do... Uh, Twitch's ads, I think, are particularly bad because you all, you get the same ads so many times. I don't I don't even know what the deal is. Like, like, do they just not have that many ad partners? I would figure Amazon would be able to get so many ad partners, but it's the same ads so often, so many times in a row. That's and that can't be good. That can't be good use of ad spend. Like. There's no way making somebody watch an ad, like, four or five times in a row within, like, a couple of few hours, uh, has good, that can't have good, uh, return on investment. Because everyone loves seeing the same Alienware advertisement nine days in a row. Yeah, anytime there's a new major release, you'll get the same ad for it, like, 500 times. Which is why I was really surprised that someone had never seen Horizon before I streamed it. Just in general, I assume everyone is aware of every AAA game before, like, you know, seeing a small streamer like me. But on top of that, like, it was like, it was a Twitch stream. And it's like, Twitch has so many ads for, like, anything. Well, I guess not every, you know. I could just be an ad block user, but still, I, I just can't imagine somebody not seeing a AAA game before seeing me. Like, the, the indie games I play, sure, it's like, you know, why I play them, is to show them to new people. But I guess it just goes to show, any time you show a game online, it, it's probably going to be somebody's first, if enough people see it. No matter how big you think it is. And a lot of people don't really sip outside of their niches. I wish more people would. It's kind of the point of my channel. Step out of your niche, find something interesting. I'm concerned that Ikeiko is an ad front for them and their insurance thing is just front. I've never heard of anyone actually using Geico insurance, but I sure have heard the ads. And I'm not sure I've ever even seen an ad for the, um... 
the insurance firm I use. I think Twitch ads are relatively tolerable. I think the main issue with any YouTube ad is really just, um, I'm only ever really annoyed by the link. Like, I know you can skip them, but like, an ad for over a minute, oh crap. There, 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 there just should not be ads. Like, they were skippable, but I saw an ad that was just like a full five minute video. I think that's, that, that should be, it's not common, but still. I just think it's funny that, like, people are super, like, well, I understand privacy concerns and stuff, but I just think it's funny when people are like, oh no, the ads know, you know, my favorite one is, ads, adsters know when you're pregnant even before you know, and then I get, like, I get uh, ads for, you know, um, you know, I'll get ads for uh, pregnancy tests, and, you know, which I obviously need for myself, you know, can't be too sure. And, um, stuff like that. Though I actually got YouTube started showing me ads for BL, like, mangas lately. And they're so, they're oddly wholesome, and, like, it's actually kind of nice to see something, like, just genuinely romantic and not, like, say, ebony, porn-esque. I guess it's because, like, BL is such a niche, but it's, like... It's actually like, you know, wholesome and nice and not just like, here you go, boobies that are not actually in the game. Which is so weird, like, Ebony, this is like, just, isn't it like a bad, like, Age of Empires sort of game or something? Like, it's absolutely nothing like the ads. We found Dracula in the bit of 100 trials. Advertises in Spanish. Most oh, oh, that was rude. That was rude, game. Yeah, there's some weird dissonance in the YouTube ads too, though. I just think it's funny how ads, how irrelevant ads are for me, because it's like. I really could not be an easier person to advertise to. You show me games, you show me like, just, even just like fairly popular games. Just show me a Resident Evil ad, show me, you know, Final Fantasy ad. It's not even like super niche stuff, but like, no, instead I get pregnancy tests and insurance and student loan forgiveness. I get a lot of student loan calls. I don't have a student loan. It's... silly. I also get lots of people under 70 in your area need to know this one mortgage tip and so on. Oh, it's Tetris! I like these levels where Kirby kind of, it has, uh, it kind of gradually, it has a gimmick for a level and it gradually in builds on itself. And then you don't really, the gimmick doesn't overplay itself. And I don't mean gimmick in a bad way. Most people use gimmick, you know, generally in a negative, but. I think plat in a platform you kind of need gimmicks because I don't really think you can make a particularly long platformer that just has Tons of just genuinely engaging levels that are all like completely the same and don't have um you know don't like introduce new stuff like it's just, gimmicks are fine it's just we tend to use the term when it's a bad thing like you know waggle controls those the problem the biggest problem with waggle controls is that they were not gimmicked. Like, it, it should be a gimmick, but it was used way more often than a gimmick should. Like, a good use of a gimmick is like Yoshi's Island. You see this really wacky enemy, and it's in like one or two levels only. And it, honestly, if anything, it used a little bit too little. 
but it feels better to see it used too little than to see it used too much. For the most part. Oh yeah, there's lots of Pokemon knockoffs on the App Store and stuff that have... They use real images or footage from Pokemon, and their game... Like, it's not an actual Pokemon bootleg, which I'm not sure if that makes it better or worse. But... This guy is totally different in EX mode. He's actually... Pretty tame outside of EX mode. Zircon... I'm actually not sure what Zircon is, aside from Mr. Zircon. When I see him ride the freaking missile, I just... I just hear that guy from the end of, uh... Doctor Strange Love going, Woohoohoo! Riding the nuke into the sunset. Also, I like the little damage numbers. It's a neat touch. To make the boss look interesting. Zircon. Yeah, it's some kind of gem, I think. Blast Swords are strong, though. Haven't you played Morrowind? It's not that kind of glass, of course, but... Glass of Gutman is always my favorite Morrowind because it's, uh... Well, because over-encumbrance is a thing. Unpleasant. I don't know how heavy armor users do it in that game. Like, a full set of Daedric armor weighs, like, like, it's half of your inventory weight. Even if you have, like, max strength, it's ridiculous. Oh, Morrowind is very good. It deserves infinite ports, unlike Skyrim. Not to be edgy, but, like, it's just amazing. Smash this dragon to smithereens. I'm not sure how much more I can keep going. My throat's getting a little bit scratchy. But, uh... How many levels does this area have? It's time to get crowned. 15. That can't be too many levels, right? Oh, we're getting... Oh no, the bitrate killer! I kind of figured it would still be here. Hold on, do not picnic. If you're getting tired, let Parker play. Alright. Let me see if the bitrate is fixed. I can't believe it. I upgraded my internet. My max up is like 30 megabits per second. I still go down below 2 megabits per second. Amazing. I think I might... I don't know what I might try. It might be hardware at my end. I don't know. I'm gonna cut out my router. Out from the... I'm gonna try a direct connection. I thought I had the issue still with the direct connection. I tried it before. Actually... Sorry about this, but let me test something real quick here. Twitch tester. What's that Twitch bandwidth tester thing called? Is it just Twitch? Yeah, Twitch test. Alright, I'm gonna download Twitch test real quick. Twitch test is moved. Alright, let me download. No, no, where's download? Just people. If you make a piece of software that is like very useful, put put the freaking put the download link on the very first page. But I'm gonna try... What? No, you son of a... Ugh. DC... Sorry about this. I just really want to test something while this issue is going on. I'm just unpause so you can enjoy the music. see is if I want to see if I do a test stream to Twitch from my laptop will I 
Am I getting a crap bitrate on here too, or is it isolated to my PC? I was trying to isolate in the chain. Where is this actually occurring? Ah, oh, you shit! to get the 64-bit one, or the, the x86 one, actually. And the thing I hate about streaming is any problems are live and screw up everybody. If I get a screw up while making a, an upload, nobody will know about it but me, and anybody who listens to me complain on Twitter. I'm sorry if you can't hear me while I'm talking, like, down at my thing. I don't know how it sounds, actually, because this is a totally new microphone setup. Well, not totally, but... Please enter your Twitch stream. Ah, oh, no! Booby, please. Bear with me here. Dash. No, Twitch! I hate that Twitch and Twitter are so similar. When you type in the URL. Can you hear me alright? Alright, cool. Okay, I need my stream key. You can get that. Settings. Channel and videos. Here. Twitch has too many settings pages. Streaming apps? If it's true, you find it on your dashboard. I was just on the dashboard. Okay, I found it. I just almost reset my stream key while streaming. Go me. Alright, I'm gonna test this. Yeah, there's like 18,000 pages of settings for Twitch. It's kind of ridiculous. I, um... Hmm. What do we... Failed. Okay. I can't... The bandwidth test is not working, so I guess that means the issue is, in fact, not isolated to one PC. It's the network. I'll get started in a second here. How many levels is this? I'm not sure if I have enough gas in the tank. Oh, just three stages? Oh, but there's the final boss. <laughs> yeah, I can't... The, 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 the bitrate test is just completely failing. The stream is stable. Uh, how bad does the stream look? Let me, let me see on my end. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. Hmm. I guess the higher motion place is going to be the worse than Pull back around here too. I like the weird, like, structure in the sky. I'm a big sucker for, like, stuff overhead. One of my first favorite, like, Minecraft maps I found has this weird, like, domed structure over an underground lake. That was my favorite place for a long time in Minecraft. No, it's not really sleepy, it's, like, grossness. I can feel that kind of... That kind of half frog in the throat for you like, feeling. I think I'll finish this one level and we'll 
we'll beat the game and probably start EX mode next week at end, I guess. So Kirby Fax streams are back for now. I think we'll finish up Return to Dreamland and then Rainbow Curse, I guess? I'll check what else I have on my Wii U, but I think I've pretty much played everything that I have on my Wii U for Kirby Fax. I unfortunately can't do any DS, 3DS stuff. Wait, what time is it? Eight? It's always around eight. I don't... That just... It's way too suspicious. That's... I don't know if somebody, like, uploads, like, 18 terabytes of porn every day at exactly eight o'clock. But... It always seems right after eight. The stream goes to crap. No matter what I do. I'm still glad I upgraded my internet, though, because that means my YouTube uploads will take, like, a half hour instead of an hour. So I probably... I encode my videos probably a bit higher res, or higher bit rate than they need to be. Fire surprise exactly how long it works, but what else? start my streams earlier, but the problem is streaming at 5 on a weekday, like, it's too early. I could probably do 5.30, but that's, that's kind of pretty close now. Also, I really, the, the fire yield dude is really cool looking. Sly Fox. It sounds like a rejected... Build your solid character. Uh, there's some really good names in the uh, for the captured soldiers in Metal Gear Solid 4 or 5. You get like solid slug. Liquid dog. Ow. Alright, I don't even want to go in there. I'm just gonna finish this up real quick. Let's go bowling. Cousin, let's go bowling. Oh. 
See, these ones are a lot more fun. It's like, you like actually do things. Chill this volcano. Like out of existence. A lot of violence against volcanoes in this game. You also cut one in half. Uh, what? Up. Oh. oh crap. Oh! Oh, I'd forgotten you could even do that! I had completely forgotten you could do that. I wonder if this is like kind of a tutorial that you can do that actually. Ability for severe doomers. There we go. Sleep is OP. It is kind of OP to be able to sleep only that long. I wish I could nap that accurately. Like when I nap, I usually end up sleeping like four hours. And then like I either have to stay up all night or just not be able to sleep next like when it's actually bedtime. And basically naps are a trap, do not fall for their lies. fun stream i'm gonna head off for now um next week we'll stream uh well we'll finish up this game i'm not sure we'll street should we do ex mode or not i guess it'll just be another couple di streams well i'll decide later i might just start it w right away with uh, rainbow cursor i might do ex mode Have a good night, everybody. And, um. Yeah, see you next stream. <laughs>